6.31 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting of the Old Sabre Police Commission of okay. Order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get to uh, any of the agenda items, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion, if one can be advanced, uh, to switch the places of items six and seven. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Uh, comments from the public. Uh, we have members of the public present. Either of you like to make a comment before we start? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> And do we have anybody online or don't we know? Um, yes, I've got it here. There are five people online. If, if anyone would raise their hand if they'd like to uh, comment. No hands raised. All right, thank you. Uh, discussion and action on the meeting minutes. Uh, I have one correction to make. It's on page three in the second paragraph, the third line. Instead of reading, he stated that the commission designated the job. I think it should read that the commission delegated the job. Either way, I got the job. <laughs> I'll make a motion to second and it's an energy out. Okay. So we three patients? Well, we first have to make the motion then to. Oh, do you know yes. and then make, so I make a motion that we accept the yep. minutes. Okay. And then okay. I, I make the motion. I move that we accept the minutes as proposed. I'll second with the modification. And, and then with the modification. The suggested. That I suggested. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, Correspondence. I have an honorable report that hasn't already been shared. Anyone have any? Seeing none. Uh, item five executive reports. Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so, as you see in your uh, fiscal year 25 operating budget report, if you go to the expenses and supply section, you can see some work that uh, our executive assistant did here. So, the bottom line is there is no report. <laughs> that the accounting department can produce. That is what all of us would like to see, right? Which would actually detail what is truly left, not encumbered, what has been spent and what, and has what hasn't, right? Um, so Jen went through and made a fourth column uh, and she entitled it balanced without purchase order. So she's oh. doing this via Excel. So she's downloading what she can get from the town um, accounting department software. And then she just wrote formulas in all those cells to get the difference. So it may be from time to time off a dollar as Excel rounds up or rounds down, but I do think that it will give you what you're looking for. Yeah, it actually, it, it did give me what I was looking for here. My only question is how much of a time consuming matter is this? Yeah. It's a, it's a once a month task. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. I mean, after the formulas does, are plugged in, it it does have to, yeah. it's like an automatic kind of thing. Yeah, it's not like you're sitting in a calculator. Calculator. No, no, no. That's it's yeah. Excel formulas. But, but you've got to download right. input. Right. Know, okay. time, but there not, could not be a rounding difference, like you said. So that's the only thing. So if you go across and you're doing some math and you're off a dollar, Understood. it could okay. just be the Excel formula because this is not part. So we really set off about a year and a half ago um, with this commission to make sure that we weren't doing the reports, that we were giving it to you right from the system completely transparently. But we can't do that anymore to give you the information that you're seeking. So I need to be transparent with you that we're manipulating the town report by adding that extra column. And I wrote on my copy, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess that's good. Then. Um, any other questions on our operating budget? I have, I have no concerns anywhere at all at this point in the year, obviously. Thank you. We are very early in the year. Yes. Uh, any questions on the off budget accounts that have been provided to you? I have, I, I have one on emergency dispatch. Very last line where it says deposit. There's no, there's no explanation of any sort of it. Usually it says state deposit, and that's what I'm assuming this was. That's probably exactly what it is, but let me go to it. 
$7,127. That sounds exactly yeah. like a quarterly payment from the state. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what that is. And then the town hall transfer on 27. So that happens at the end of each fiscal year. Um, yeah, I know I've seen it before. Yep. Yeah. At the end of each fiscal year. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, but just refresh my memory. Sure. So it's it's monies that we've taken in for pistol permits or any other type of administrative work that needs to be reinserted back into the operating budget. Okay. So they're off. They're every all expenses for that are charged to the off budget account during the year and at the fiscal year prior to the final audit. It's transferred back into the operating budget by the finance director. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Personnel matters. Um, so uh, we will have two um, candidates going off to the police academy October 3rd or October 4th is their first day. So we're very excited about that. That obviously does um, clear up another additional spot in our uh, ranks of public safety dispatchers. So we're actually looking for three full time public safety dispatchers. Um, we have two uh, per diem dispatchers that are just about done with their training. And both have indicated that they're interested in a full-time slot. Um, so we're going to allow an internal process. Additionally, this Thursday, uh, I think we have 15 to 18 candidates uh, that are not internal coming in to test for the position. So I'm very confident in a couple of weeks we'll have those folks selected. And depending on what they come with us for training, maybe an instant plug and play, or they'll start their three months um, worth of training. Are we um, fully staffed now? In the, in the police room? Yes. No, no. Okay. Did we participate in the um, the statewide recruitment there last week? If you want to go to professional development update. Is that okay? Uh, there I am. Okay. Um, so there was two um, recruiting efforts in the state last week. One was at the police academy and one was at the University of New Haven. Um, and we participated in both of them. So Excellent. we had some nice signage made up that made um, things attractive. We had a picture of Sky even that said, come work with me. Um, so we did, uh, you know, everything we could to, to draw some folks in um, and the different personnel that did attend that. I thank them for doing that. They reported, you know, they, they interacted with some people who had an interest. Um, I don't think it was as widely attended as we would have hoped, but it was good to be out there and participating in these events. And so now we have the stuff to do that. Um, and so if another opportunity presents itself, we'll be able to do that with these. How many municipalities did participate? In you know, I, I don't know. It wasn't just um, local departments either. There were state and federal uh, law enforcement agencies at both career fairs. Parker Curran had an article, so, yeah. and it sounded as if it was uh, pretty We were happy to be there. When we attend these uh, recruiting events, <clears throat> do people sign an email? Like, how do you follow up with them? Yeah, it depends on how engaged they want to be, right? So some folks just stop and really don't want to commit with a name or an email. Okay. And some choose to lose some use some information, and then we get back in touch with them. But we certainly push our application procedure, which is policeapp.com. Right. Um, and we ask folks to you can do that right on the spot on their side of their phone while standing with us if they want to. Okay. Good to know. Uh, the activity report you have um, in your packets, so I will answer any questions that you may have on that. Um, but I will say, you know, I say this every year and everyone tilts their head and looks at me like I'm strange. But once again, we have had uh, a heavier caseload or more significant calls post Labor Day. For some reason, this has happened year over year over year. So everyone always thinks Old Saybrook must be busy June, July, and August, and dead the rest of the year. That is never what our data has shown over the last 15 years. You folks see that uh, during the budget process. But once again, post Labor Day, um, we've had more significant um, time-consuming calls for service. Why that is, I do not know. We did have a lot more traffic stops during the summer. <laughs> yeah. I do have a question. Sure. Um, on item number 106, it's assault slash sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that you can cue sexual assault as its own identity? No, that's the way our remember the dispatchers came in and give you that right. presentation. So that's how the that's how the protocol mm -hmm. reads. So it's assault or sexual assault. Okay. And then based on the questionings in there, it would break it down into what the proper response is. I just feel is. like I'm just wondering. You know, that's an inclusive number. Like that, you know, sexual assault, like who's, 
mm. so that promote additional training and that kind of thing to use that based on the number of cases that are being recorded? Like, how do you gauge that? I mean, so if you look across the months there, mm -hmm. um, those aren't really high numbers. January no. is a little bit of a high number, but those aren't a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. um, but remember, one is one victim and one is very time consuming. But I don't look at that and say we have an issue in that area or that we need dedicated personnel in that area. Okay. I was just wondering how you were differentiating that with your staff and how training was being assigned for that. Yeah, there's no additional training. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So every police officer is able to handle that. If I deem it to be significant and want to have a detective get involved, that'll then, be my decision. Okay. Yeah. So it just will escalate as needed. As needed. Correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just like all our cases. Okay. Yeah. So we just recently had a, an animal um, issue where we're investigating cruelty to animal that may lead to an arrest warrant, right? Very time consuming case. But if you looked at that and saw an animal thing, you probably were like, eh, an animal thing. So every single case is important and right. every single case is managed and supervised appropriately. Okay. I just didn't know if that could yeah, be no, a second line. Please, animals are very important. <laughs> Always. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Okay, any other questions until we get to the executive goals update? Uh, no, I just have my own. No. Chief, great. Um, so the chairman asked that I do a, just a, a quick overview. We had talked a while ago about doing this in September. Um, so he made sure that it wasn't going to be a large PowerPoint presentation with dry ice and just merely a, a quick summary. So I will go uh, through them with you. Uh, so the first one was I was hoping to get, complete my master's in public safety, public administration uh, with a concentration in public safety by the end of December. It's probably a lofty goal. So that'll probably be more like first quarter of next year. I think doing it in 12 months was probably a stretch, but I tried. Um, but I do think that'll be accomplished in the first quarter of next year. Uh, the next one is uh, accomplishing tier three accreditation, which would be uh, two and a half, three years prior to what we actually have to attain it at. Um, and I believe that we're going to hear some very good news on that shortly, but certainly by the end of the year. Um, revitalize and restart the police explorer program. Uh, and tonight, I'm very fortunate to have Patrolman Simpson here, who is a uh, one half of a dynamic duo that is uh, heading up our new Explorer post. And I thought that I'd give him just a few minutes uh, to talk to you about our Police Explorer program and then uh, talk to our two Police Explorers uh, that are here tonight. And we're happy yes. to be here very much so. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Roman Simpson, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right. It's awesome. All right, so post 106. So Chief Sparrow is currently the chair of our post. We have two sworn law enforcement officers who are in charge of it, myself and Patrolman O'Connell. Patrolman O'Connell is currently deployed overseas right now. She'll be home. A couple months, it'll be nice to get her back. She'll be uh, assisting us with the program when she gets back. And the fiance of Patrolman Simpson. Yes, <laughs> so he's very, so you'll be very, 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 I'm very excited. Yes. <laughs> so currently, we have four explorers in our program. We have two here tonight. The other two were not able to make it. We're continuing recruitment. We want to get a total of 10 explorers overall. Be a nice final goal for the program. So the explorer program is for young adults age 14 to 21 who are interested in law enforcement. So we give them the opportunity to learn and actually experience law enforcement firsthand in a safe and controlled environment. So primarily we do that through ride-alongs. That's what we're doing tonight. We have Jackson's riding with me tonight, Devin's riding with Patrolman Mora. So an explorer is assigned an officer for the shift. It's typically a more experienced officer, someone with at least a year on the road. We're not going to put them with somebody brand new and just kind of give them a better overall experience. They get to actually see what the job is like firsthand from the call coming in over the radio, everything coming in on the MDT, responding, showing up, doing an investigation, and kind of seeing what pans out from that. Explores them. Go ahead. Quick interruption. Is it for the whole shift? Or the it can be for the whole shift. Typically, we do splits. So our currently, our explorers are in high school right now. 
I don't typically have them stay up past eight o'clock at night. They're not, they're not riding with me until 11 o'clock or midnight. I think that would be unreasonable. That's the whole point of my question. Yes. So we're, we're doing splits right now. When they get older, if they're out of high school and they're willing to, they can work up to 11 o'clock. They don't work the midnight shift. So it's any time from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. They can do a ride Thanks. So again, they're not getting out on any kind of violent calls, anything dangerous, traffic stops, but a routine medical call, a past larceny, something like that. It's just so they can kind of experience what the calls are like and just see that firsthand. Wait, can I interrupt? Yes. Is this something that I've been going my credit on that I've wanted for so long? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> All right, fine. So that's the ride along <laughs> aspect of it. Now that we have a few more explorers, we're also going to start doing scenario-based training. So we'll do monthly meetings. We can actually have the explorers do hands-on a mock medical scenario mm -hmm. or a mock larceny investigation or even traffic stops out back where we can park a cruiser, have them use the lights and siren. We'll have another officer or dispatcher act as the person that they're stopping. They can do their own, their own investigations themselves. They can kind of experience what that's like through the eyes of possibly being an officer. So those are kind of how we do the training. We also have explorers come and work with town functions. So the past two functions that we had were the Old Saber Fire Department Parade and Celebrate Saber. We actually had Desmond assisting me with both of those. So the explorers are out there doing traffic control, setting up cone patterns, just helping officers wherever they might need them in those large events with a lot of people. We also have the upcoming art show. So we'll have all of our explorers for that as well, assisting officers wherever they might need it. That's kind of an overview of what you know, the program does. We're sponsored by a program called NERLEA, which is the Northeast Regional Law Enforcement Educational Association. Basically, it's all of New England with New York State and New Jersey combined. We have 60 police explorer posts and about 850 explorers throughout that New England region. All of them come together. We do annual stations days. So we have all the scenario-based training that the explorers do. Each post will compete against each other and kind of see who's the best, make a little fun competition out of it. We have a stations day and a tactical challenge day, which is more of a hands-on, a little bit of room clearance, going hands-on with a suspect. They're not quite fighting, but practicing doing arrest control, putting handcuffs on somebody, that sort of stuff. So we try to make it fun, try to help the kids learn, keep them involved as much as we can. So that's kind of a brief overview of the program. Do you have any other questions about it? I have a question. Yes. Um, what equipment do they have? So they don't really have a lot of equipment. They do have a duty belt, they have their medical gloves, they have flashlights. That's pretty much it. We're not going to give them, no, you know, handcuffs or anything along those lines. Yeah, it's, just, it's more of to feel like you're actually a police officer okay. wearing a uniform, wearing a duty belt, and that sort of thing. Just the keys to the cars, only when they drive. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you do the recruiting? Do you go to the high school and um, that's how we started out? We went to the high school, set up a little table, tried to get some kids coming in, gave out applications, walked around, talked to them. But the guidance counselors have been the best route for us. Is actually right. okay. the program to the guidance counselors, giving them informational materials and applications. The guidance counselors know their kids the best, kind of know who's a good fit for the program, who's interested, yeah. and can guide them along the way. I kind of figured that. That's yeah. good. What kind of time investment is it for them? For the actual explorers? Yes. Not very much. Um, obviously, when they're in school, we're not trying to take away a ton of their time. So I think Desmond's been doing roughly weekly, if not bi-weekly, ride-alongs four hours a week, whenever it fits for his schedule. I, I work a lot of weekends. He's not in school, so he can come right along from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday night. And then I get, we'll do a uh, monthly meeting. It's about an hour or two for the meeting when we start getting those out. And you don't introduce them to report writing yet. <laughs> not yet, no. So they're not doing anything um, that might go up the course. They can't type reports. They can't obviously use the MDTs. They're not running people in the system, nothing along those lines. They can simply watch. But on, on that point, uh, when the post is really going, we'll actually have a separate computer that they'll type a summary of what they saw mm -hmm. on their shift to get used to doing report writing. So while the officer's in the station doing report writing, they'll have like a little narrative, like a journal that they'll that they'll keep. So we, we do a handwritten version of that currently as well, but eventually we'll be clicking. James, are you saying how long the program was when you started, or is it? Or the can they be explorers until they turn 21? Yep. And when they start now? Yep, whenever they start. So the earliest you can start is 14 years old, mm -hmm. and then it ends once you're 21 years old. So they can stay in that program that entire yep, time? Yep, the entire time, the okay. whole seven years. Yeah. Oh. And so pre-COVID, very robust explorer post. COVID kind of destroyed it because we couldn't have everyone coming in the station. But prior to that, it served as a great feeder program. Um, so right now, if you're an explorer in good standing and you graduate high school, We'll give you a per diem dispatching job if you pass all the tests and meet the requirements. 
all throughout college. So while your friends are coming home making you know $16 an hour in a retail place, you're coming home making $25, $26 an hour in a police department. And so whether you want to go into the field of law enforcement or not for criminal justice, what a phenomenal thing to have on your resume that for the past three and a half, four years, you've worked for a local police department. Um, and then you you've, yourself have seen past explorers interview in front of you to become patrolmen. So this could be our own self-initiated recruiting program. We just need to get it going again post-COVID. And I found the, the two best officers that I think could do that and they're doing so. That's great, thank you. Um, so I'm sorry, you may have said this, but is it local or can it let only? Local so only? actually both of our explorers here are from Madison. Awesome, so okay, two, so two we're spreading. Okay, program. Oh, we have two out of absolutely. that's great, yeah. okay. So not every police department has a program, but our doors are open, right? Yep. Why would we limit ourselves? Never, yeah. never, no, of course. And it's a rolling application yep. with the student. Always take it. <laughs> yep. That's great. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much. Is there a, Wait, Laura, do they have a review process? process? Like, how, how do you determine, like, okay, yeah, this was a good fit. We chose these guys who are interested in the position, and they've been on these calls, and things like that. You know, what's the So, what's like, the like, process? Um, like, this they came yeah. into the program? Yeah. yeah. I think it would be more of an involvement thing if we end up having issues with an explorer or something like that, then we went out as a fit for the program. But so far, everyone's been very involved. They're happy to be part of it. Yeah, okay. Cool. It's kind of like an OJT program. What's an OJT? Similar, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Do they have Thank any questions for us? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? If you guys are working the arts and crafts, come by the Lions tent if you need something to eat or drink. Oh, I'll be with there both days, all oh, day. Oh, they will give you, I think, 20 years. years I've never been invited to oh, a hot dog. Yeah. Well, it's better than hot dogs. We're going to I love that. That's nice. I'm so happy. Thank you, guys. I love this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so going on, uh, the next one is work with the police commission to bring the evaluation matter to resolution one way or the other. So I'm assuming that we'll do that uh, prior to the end of the year. Uh, work with the police commission to develop the framework for department staffing and structure plan. You've received that and approved that, and so that's done. Uh, work internally and with the police commission on leadership succession planning. I think we've had a lot of conversation about that. We'll have a little bit more um, tonight during the executive session as well. Um, work internally and with the police committee, I did that, hold a town hall meeting with the public and the department's leadership team. So we haven't done that yet. And the reason I haven't scheduled that yet is our sergeants, as you know, are, are spread really thin, right? So we're down on our first line supervision staff. And I really didn't want to load them with one more thing that they would really have to prepare for. So um, we'll see if we'll have time to do that before the end of the year. Maybe it'll be in response to the PERF study. Uh, when that finally comes in is released, maybe that's when we'll set up a panel and let people come ask their questions, um, you know, to our to our leadership. Uh, otherwise, we might have to, to push that to the first of the year. But I'll give you an update um, in our executive session about uh, the upcoming sergeant's exam. So we might have more people available for that specific role, which would be nice. Um, our summertime community picnic, we combined as reported last month with our uh, school supply drive. Um, so lots of hot dogs. I think there was a grocery run in the awesome. middle of the school <laughs> right. and, and we bought well <laughs> over a hundred worth of things yes. for everyone. Um, so we're really happy with that response. And then, you know, the, the final one was continue to be a bold vocal public safety leader that advocates, ensures priorities, <laughs> protects, speaks, and leads. The um, modest goal. Right? And the, the very modest goal. And I think that I uh, more than achieved that today and will continue to do so um, through the end of the year. So that's a quick uh, overview, 50,000 foot overview uh, of the executive goals, but really excited to bring the explorers to you. I know that was something that everyone was really interested in. I'll be really excited to talk to you about tier three accreditation coming very, very soon. Um, so I think I think good things are are happening. That's nice. Thank you. Joe, any questions? I have a question. Um, is there a possibility to add in your executive report events? So you do go and have like an overview each time that kind of gives a snapshot of it, but um, kind of a little bit more, or maybe you can detail a little bit more as to um, when you are having a community event, like how much of your staff is being assigned to that. So drill it down just a little bit more so we know 
you know, like thinking long term of budget expenses, things like that. Yeah, but I don't think I'd run a cost center for you because sometimes no, that's, I'm just that's saying, day like, day. you had an upcoming event, you just did that with the back to school supply and that kind of thing, but more so that we know um, what has happened and what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll continue to report on the events that we do. I mean, okay, I I but something more scheduled that. so that you know the arts mm -hmm. event is coming up. So, but that's not a, our event, that's no, just a community just event. That we have a community police. event that there could be police involved or something. <clears throat> something just to kind of give us a little bit more information, like where you fit in and what your team is doing. So I will share that on Sunday, we had a bike event for the whole community. We shut down, the police shut down the causeway and they let the whole, the whole crew go. And it was absolutely amazing. Was it a police event? Nah. But but they helped. So um, yeah. if that's what you would yeah, like. Yeah, something like I didn't know that that happened. So I yeah. just think that if yeah. we had well, something like at a glance kind of thing. I mean, it's, nice to it's how involved in the community you want to be. So like we have we have alerts that go out, right? We have oh, garden planting and cleanup days. <laughs> right. I mean, I, yeah. I think. I just don't know what a commission report would be. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. No, right more now. just like an event, a topic of events. Yeah, and so I, I I believe for the last 15 years, whenever we've done something, I'll be like, hey, we did the turkey drive, or hey, we're doing the toy drive, or hey, we're doing the I'm drive. looking more as like what's upcoming so that we were aware of that. Like I didn't know about the bike event. That would have been nice to have known. I would have liked to walk down. To see that, well, it's bike ride only. Well, so that's okay. I wouldn't be able to bike. bike you know? so. <laughs> no, I'm saying, saying, like I was at the. Table. I just think that if there's but, things that you know, a date is penned in and you're aware of it, I think that it would be nice for us to know too. If there are Old Saber Police Department sponsored events, or you want like a community calendar? Oh uh, no, not a understand. community calendar. Just things that like you know, hey, I'm doing the turkey drive in November. This is the date. We're doing school supplies. This is the date. But we have the dates a month in advance. So it's like at a glance, we know what's happening. Sometimes we don't have that, but okay. we'll do if best. you do have it, it would be nice to know. Or I mean, can... they do crowd control at St. James, right? Church. St. John's. St. John's. John's Church. Like they do it every single week. So why, like, what are you expecting? Oh no, that's no. Not I think Jackie's yeah, saying like when the that. turkey drive's coming or the toy drive or the diaper drive. I know okay, we yeah. do get some, you know, some. But it's yeah. more like but info after the fact. Police duty, right? Okay. Kind of like just so we can. So February is always diapers. It's time to do your duty. Is what we call that. Right. Um, <laughs> so in January, you're going to let us know. Hey, in February. But it's the same thing every year. But yes. Like, yeah. I can give you a calendar of like months that we what we normally do. Okay, that would be helpful. That sure. way, we'll be able to know coming up what the plan is. I, 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 don't, I don't I don't think I understand what you mean by what the plan is. Like I'm not gonna give you my staffing for the upcoming. Oh, no, I'm not no, asking right. For right. That. So, you just think to be able to promote it probably. Yeah. If like, people are wondering what's going on. Yeah. I, that's what I'm thinking. If somebody right. says, Hey, what's happening in town mm. or whatever, they are either gonna read about it in the harbor news or a neighbor may mm. explain it to them. But if they ask us, we could say, Oh, in November, the police department is having the turkey event at Stop and Shop. Every November. Right? You know, I think I think for you, this is a matter of you know what's happening once a month. For us, it's not the same thing. And I think what may be a part of the solution or a suggestion I could make is, you know, just drop us a line, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of time on email to all of us saying these are the things that are that are coming up at the department. And I think that would help. For yeah. us to know what's coming. Um, yeah, I mean, so listen, I understand what you're trying to say. I'll give you a list of what we normally do in the months. I think I communicate a lot with the commission in between meetings, and I think that I have to balance that on communicating too much in between the meetings. Um, so 
because this is the forum, right, where I'm supposed to be meeting and briefing. And when something's going on significantly, I do send out those emails. So let me start first with kind of like a calendar of events, almost like an FTD calendar, right? Okay. This is kind of what we do in January. This is kind of what we do in February, that kind of thing. And if um, we need to plug something in along yeah, the way, absolutely. you let us know sure. and that we'll take that on. Yeah. And then you could just let us know in your executive reports and we're like, okay. That's yeah, and, I, and again, I think I do that, but sure. More like a something that we could tangible. But what are you going to take on? Like we, there's we, nothing to take we on. We are There's invited no to these events. We are invited to like. She's going to raise turkeys for the turkey job. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to like diapers? Like, oh, I mean, oh, I mean, it's not really. I think we got got this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions on the executive goals? Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, let's move on to the next item: uh, discussion and possible action regarding crosswalk safety concerns. Yeah. So before we before we quickly before we get to Jeff, so um, the the chair had asked that this be placed on the agenda, which obviously it was. And I thought to myself, you know, before you have a conversation about forming a subcommittee or whatever your thoughts are, I thought it'd be best to brief the commission on what's actually currently going on. Um, and I think that everyone would find that probably helpful. So the best person for that is our town engineer that works on all these projects, sometimes exclusively with the first selectman, sometimes the first selectman and I, sometimes with land use, the first selectman and I. So Jeff's usually involved in every single project that the town of Old Civic does that requires regulatory oversight, regulatory review, and pretty much measurements. Um, and, and so we're very, very fortunate to have him. He's been dedicated to the town. He'll tell you how long he's been working for the town, but um, as, a, as a contractor, but he, he's been through every single major project that I've been involved in. And his counsel is always steadfast and uh, proper, and we appreciate the, the time and dedication he's given to the town. Uh, so with that, I will turn that over to uh, Jeffrey Jacobs. Good evening, everyone. Um, the chief asked me specifically to update you on what we're working on with respect to the Main Street crosswalks yes. here in the downtown area. But he also asked me to um, provide an overview of other projects we're working on that may be safety related. And, you know, other than the crosswalks in the downtown area, most of the projects have focused on uh, sidewalk improvements for pedestrian safety. And that's really a function of all the grant uh, opportunities that are available to municipalities uh, through the Community Connectivity Grant Program, uh, the Steep Grant Program, uh, and other various grant programs. So before I get into that, just to give you a, a quick update, um, right now we are just wrapping up uh, a project for sidewalks from the Dairy Queen, essentially the Old Post Road, to the Westbrook Town Line. Uh, that project is uh, under review by Connecticut DOT now, and we expect that project to, to go out to bid probably the end of this year, beginning of next year. Uh, with construction starting in the springtime. Mm -hmm. We're also working on another project. It's uh, a lot set project. Uh, it was actually, we designed it in 2018. It was a TOD project, which is a transportation oriented development project. And that basically uh, will have sidewalks and lighting, the decorative lighting uh, that we've used across the street. Uh, in the parking lot and mm -hmm. the sidewalk that goes to Lynn Street. That'll go essentially from Elm Street um, all the way to Stage Road, uh, including the Stage Road Main Street intersection to North Main Street. And those will have uh, sidewalks all along the, the street or include a lot of the sidewalks that we have in that area. Uh, the TOD grant was 100% uh, grant that funded design. There was no money for construction. So that project pretty much was on the shelf for about the last six years or so. Um, the town now has a grant. Uh, it's a lots of grant. Uh, they would fund 100% of the construction of that project. Uh, they've actually had that grant for a few years now, but the project kind of got bogged down with necessary easements. There were, Sir, one second. Yes. What is Sage Road? I'm it's yeah. by CBS. Oh, like, yeah. okay. 
Yeah, CBS two two North Main Street. Thank you, across, thank you. I don't know why I was blinking. Yeah. I'm like, so well, you, you think about about Jeff's timeline. Think about yeah. all the housing that went in on North Main Street. Yeah. Right, and so the connecting sidewalks to make that a pedestrian friendly zone was applied for around the same time construction was finishing for there. Right, so there's this is all part of a massive uh, plan of development and a sidewalk connection plan that the planning commission has uh, dealt with. Even when you do the sidewalk. <clears throat> are they going to fix ones that are bad? Like if you come out of a uh, paperback and you walk toward Waltz, that's a horrible sidewalk right there. Now, how do those get fixed? Do they fall under the, the same grant as um, sidewalks? No, I mean, the, the grants, they, they pretty much want to uh, improve you know, accessibility in areas where you don't have safe access now. Uh, they don't like to do uh, what they call maintenance projects. So uh, there have been some grants that, that you know, they, you know, uh, funded some of those type of projects, but that, you know, they're not ones that they really like to fund. Let's keep our focus back on the safety issues here. Okay. But um, maybe as local traffic traffic authority, we could have some sort of say in that. On what fixing sidewalks? I don't know. Oh, that's, no, that's, 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 that's I'm just going to keep saying it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, public, yeah, it's a public works. Project. Yes. All right. 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 Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that that's that project. That you know that project got bogged down a little bit because of, of easements. There were ten permanent easements and fourteen temporary easements that were required for that project. So that took a lot of negotiations with adjacent property owners. So I think all but two of those twenty six easements are now in place. Uh, we have agreements for those final two, so we expect uh, that project uh, hopefully to go to construction in the fall. Um, Carl didn't want to have two simultaneous projects on Route 1 going at the, at the same time. Um, I'll also add on that one that's going to Westbrook Town Line, we're also working with Westbrook to continue that sidewalk from Westbrook through to the Vista Complex. Got a lot of those folks apparently walked uh, over to Max's place and then at Spencer Plain Road to uh, intersection. Mm -hmm. So um, Westbrook is is uh, working on that. Uh, so we'll provide a nice a nice connection. Um, in terms of uh, uh, crosswalks, that Watson project, which is from Elm Street to Stage Road, also includes a crosswalk across the head of Main Street, uh, parallel with Route One. And that will involve some signal modification. So <laughs> that crosswalk will be funded as part of that project, which was just by me. No, so this will be new. This is from the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Across Main Street, parallel with Route 1. Okay, so are they going to add the, the the different things on all four sides, or what are we doing? Yeah, well, there's, there's um, pedestrian... Um, uh, cycles, for, I believe, across um, Route One on two. both ways. I think two, right? And yeah. also North Main Street. So there's there's three crosswalks there now. There's just not one across Main Street from um, the, the uh, same country bar. Same country bar. Yeah. 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 So that'll be part of that that project. Okay. Uh, so the battle there. Excuse me. The battle there will be my request to have that be what's called exclusive pedestrian phasing, which means if the light is red and the walk sign is go, no traffic should be moving. Currently, the DOT does not like something called exclusive pedestrian phasing. They like the driver to be able to stop, look, and take a right on red so that traffic is not bogged down. Again, I feel that when the pedestrian gets the go sign, they should be able to assume that everything is stopped, but that's always the that's always the pinch at the state DOT. Yeah, and the overhead signals, you know, that's we're not traffic engineers. Um, that's being done by a traffic engineer that's that's working along with us because that involves changing the signals, you know, allowing for the pedestrian phasing. Um, see, other than this, um, we're also uh, just started working on a crosswalk at. Um, Maple Street and Main Street, where there's been requests uh, to cross the other side of the street there. And we have a traffic engineer that is on board now and is working on uh, uh, modifying that signal for pedestrian phasing. So 
uh, that would be something that we're also hoping will come online. And if you remember, the commission remembers the ladies come yes. to it. So this okay. is right. Okay. So I said it went to Carl and back to Carl, and that's where engineering. Yeah. So this is the process, right? It takes a while to get to the crosswalks. So we're at Maple Maple Ave. Maple and Maine. Maple and Maine. Yep. And it's to be able one. to be able to go across. Yeah, but it's a state road. Yeah. And so it involves you know, some yes, that was. Right. Yep. So that's that's ongoing now. It's on me. Um, the ones that the chief asked me to kind of go through in more detail with you are the main street crosswalks. Uh, there are three crosswalks that uh, we're doing now as part of one project that I believe is being funded through the ARPA funds, I, I, I believe. There's actually a total of five that uh, we're looking at, but we're doing these first three uh, first, and I'll give you a more people who knows. And if I get into too much detail here, just stop me. They will not be too much detail. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, these three crosswalks, we have uh, one here on that is um, <laughs> but one here at uh, Elm Street and Polar Street, which is an existing crosswalk. There's one site number two here. That's the existing crosswalk. This is Waltz right in here. Okay. And the other one is site number three here, which is at St. John's Church. And I've got a big set of drawings here, and I'm just going to go through the ones that I think you might be most interested in because there's a lot of details. And all three of these projects are basically going to include some bump outs uh, to get pedestrians to the rear of the cars uh, so people can hopefully see them and uh, our RFBs which are rapid rectangular flashing beacons and those are pedestrian actuated on either side of Main Street and there will also be a signal in the middle of the um, beacon. When do you anticipate this is going to happen? Uh, this is going to be uh, We've got to have a commitment by the end of this year in terms of the ARPA funds, because uh, then any other ARPA funds, I guess, have to be uh, given back to the, to the government. So it, you have to have a commitment by the end of the year, say you do get the money, how long will it take them to it, put this into practice? This, this would go out the bid again, probably the very beginning of, of the year, say January, February, for um, a project this next construction season. Okay. Could you repeat what you just yes. said? Like, because I was focusing on the pictures, I was yeah. listening. So, can okay. you <laughs> repeat what you said about the flashing? Okay. Okay. Thank you. What we're going to do, for instance, this is at, at Elm Street. Yeah. And a lot of the sidewalks now go into the back of parking spots. Uh -huh. They go directly yeah. into telephone poles, and so we're going to orient these. Um, so we avoid those conflicts. Elm Street, what we'll do is we'll have a bump out here, okay? In the Colter Street, we'll have a bump out here, which will get pedestrians to the rear of the parking spots right now. So they're a little bit more visible to oncoming traffic. So when you say bump out, sorry, it's yes. like a curb? It's That's... not gonna be a curb only because, uh, well, let me put it this way. There's gonna be a flush curb with the pavement. Wheelchairs. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's like really because here. Yeah, Main oh. Street is so. Oh, I get what you're saying. Main Street so flat. Yeah. That if we built curbs up, everything would be slowed yeah. down to the sidewalk, and it run all the water right down. So the then, sidewalk. what is the bump out? Uh, what it's going to be? It's going to be a flush concrete curb. There's a flush concrete curb here. This on either side is going to be uh, an exposed aggregate concrete. It's got like a pebbly finish. Um, there were a variety of options that were presented to, to Carl on that. And this is what we selected. And then these sidewalks right here will be the colored and stenciled sidewalks that will go out to um, a detectable warning strip right here on, on each side. And then at each location, there'll be uh, maybe I'll. We're basically building a peninsula but, but, from the side of Main Street to okay. increase the visibility of the pedestrian to the vehicle operator on Main Street who wants to cross. But it's flush with the road. It yes. has to be so flush with the road. So it's not even like reasons. they could. Uh, so it has to be flush because we have to plow. Visual difference. The <laughs> there won't be a visual. Right, right. Okay. So well, we have a visual difference in the surface, a distinct visual difference. 
Will that go across okay. the whole road, the visual difference? Uh, there will be um, visual difference here, and then these will be uh, an imprinted thermal plastic sidewalk that will have a brick type pattern. So okay. that will be colored as well. Okay. That will be colored as well. And I've seen in West Hartford where they have in the center of the road, it is a almost like a stop sign with red flashing lights that must get triggered when somebody's on the side of the road. Is yeah, that I'm not familiar with you know, West Hartford? Okay. Is that what we're getting? Yes. What, what exactly are these lights? Yeah. So you got to look at the folder. There you go. These pictures right here. This be um, for oncoming traffic. There'd be one right by where the pedestrians are standing, getting ready to cross. It'd be the same thing on the opposite side of the street. And then it'd be a double facing one that would be right in the median, right at, at uh, just before the crosswalk. So you'd have a, a lighted feature here, a lighted feature of this over here, and then a double sided one in the middle uh, where the median is now. So and they are to miss. But they have they to press the button only to... at each end, sorry, not Correct. in the middle. They wouldn't have to press it again they in the middle. No. Okay. No. Um, so is this going to be done also at the top of Main where the barn is? Top of Main will actually have a signalized intersection and it'll be uh, controlled by the overhead signal. But it, it is also be a, a press button type of thing. Okay. But it's not, not these type of things. It's more of the ones you'd see downtown in the city where you'll have a pedestal and you have the, the thing that'll beep and tell you how many uh so the b things at the top of main street yeah. so our yeah. one second so our crosswalks on main street are called mid-block crosswalks okay so they're crosswalks that are located at a non-signalized internet <clears throat> if main street were built new today it would be very unlikely that we would get the crosswalks that we have because crosswalks nowadays are only installed at signalized signalized intersections so you can get the walk don't walk like that corresponds with the traffic control signal that's telling the vehicles what to do. So this enhancement is specific to mid-block crosswalks that are already in existence. So, I, the way you put these up at the ends, when you said you're gonna make that walk <clears throat> over the end of the road, the car parked in the way you come is that going to block the person again? Because right now, when you're driving down, like, if you're going towards St. John's and you get to that walkway, all you see is two heads because the car is there. Is that going to go away with the way? With no, the and I don't think it'll completely go away. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the safety feature are really these rapid rectangular flashing beacons. These are up higher. Okay, so you'll see these right here are going to be flashing. Uh, as will the center one and as will the, the other side. So that will let drivers know someone's in mm -hmm. the crosswalk ready to go across. That's correct. Okay. And Jeff, are we eliminating any um, parking spaces when we make that safety peninsula? There are a couple parking spots here and there that, that will be um, eliminated in, in order to provide these um, bump outs. Bump yeah. outs. Uh, there will bump be out. some uh, changes to the uh, Handicap accessible parking. Okay. Uh, most of them in town don't meet current standards uh, in terms of the width of the parking space and the access aisle. So uh, anytime you modify, uh, you know, the existing parking, you have to comply with ADA. So what are we doing? Are we adding more, or are we just no? Well, what we're better? trying to do is, is make it better. So okay. You know, here we're providing. Uh, this is in front of the Liberty Bank. Okay, that yeah. was still, even though it was done yeah. not too long ago, still doesn't conform. Uh, so we're making that a, a conforming space. Okay. So my really, I'm the only thing I'm confused about. We're we're doing the top of Main. We're doing these. Are they all going to conform? Like, is it all going to be the same? Mm -hmm. or are we separating them? It's like different projects. Different, different, different projects, but different they will locations. still be the same, not upgrades, but like they'll still be the same. Like, it'll, it'll be consistent. Okay, yes. thank you. Consistent. It'll yes. Consistent. Okay. So the mid block crosswalks will be consistent, and the one at the head of Main, Main Street will be consistent with a signalized. Okay. Yeah. So, so we don't we don't have to redo another one later on because it wasn't following this 
No, okay. these three will all be put out at the same time. Thank you. Under, under one bid. Okay. Uh, there's two other ones we need to work on. Which um, ones? Uh, Sheffield Street. Yep. And um, actually, I developed concept plans a long time ago. We met with the chief and Carl, and we're going to make some a little bit of changes. I think we're going to shift it on the opposite side of Sheffield. Wait, Street. Sheffield oh, across? Sheffield? Like, like where the middle school kids come out? Correct. Correct. Okay. That one is going to change, and uh, that makes sense. Also, wanted to introduce one uh, to get across the street to the Cape. Uh, mm -hmm. where the new parking spot is, the new parking area is there. Yeah. 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 And that was something, you know, suggestion of the chief. So um, that, those are going to be a little harder to get. Because That'll be a new bid block. It's a new bid block, and there's no existing media in there, so there's no refuge island in there. So that one's going to be a little bit tougher to. Uh, but it's also yeah. so close to the other two. It's like you're. Well, nobody wants to walk. Yeah, nobody, nobody wants to walk with the park. But even for you middle school theater. kids, they, yeah. they go across the river mm -hmm. and they're like, let me just cross my son. Yes, like, I know. You yeah. are going to. So the, the one at the top of Main Street will basically be like yeah. how you cross from the firehouse to Old Boston Post yeah. Road. Okay. That should eventually be a box. Right? Okay, so yes. In theory, we should have a box. Now, the intersection isn't perfectly square because we're in Colonial Old State Road. But if you go like, to different states, like go to Florida, right? Everything is square and box. That's the way you're supposed to be doing the traffic design. So, a box of crosswalks at a major intersection with signal eyes, I'd like to have the exclusive pedestrian phasing, is the way to go. Now, we got to deal with our you know, potentially unsafe mid block crosswalks that have been around in Old Saybrook for decades upon decades, right? Yeah. And so all of us have driven down Main Street and went, oh my God, mm -hmm. we get it. So this, Jeff, when did we start working on this? How long ago? Oh, a long time ago, Chief. <laughs> so this has been a conversation for a long time. And what happens, and Jeff alluded to it, is sometimes there's grant money, but the grant money is design only. So we do this great job on design and then it gets shelled because there's no money to do anything. And so when we design this, what we want it to do is get away from, as best as we can, just seeing the head in between the two cars before you're actually in the roadway. So the idea of the peninsula is, is I hate to say, it, it's kind of like walking the plank. You're coming out a little bit, but you're still in a safe area. You're triggering the signalized mid-block crosswalk actuator that's warning vehicular traffic, and then you're crossing Main Street. So not perfect because mid-block crosswalks are not perfect but an immense, immense safety enhancement. But right now, only the funds possibly for three out of the five. But, okay, I guess what bothers me is why is the Sheffield Street not, you know, a priority? And I, I should have... It's, it's not that it's not a, a priority. It's, there's really... A there's priority. more to it? It's, or? Well, that one is going to be changed <laughs> from... Bless you. Bless you. One side of the intersection. One different. side of the intersection to the other side okay. of the intersection. So it's a little bit more involved. Okay. <clears throat> and I have, I'm comforted that when there are a majority of the school children using that intersection, there's a police officer directing. Oh, 100%. Right? Yes. And yeah, so yes. the other ones, there really isn't. St. John's Church, Sunday morning, great. But when Main Street's hustling and bustling and all the businesses are on the more of the north end and, you know, Patrons want to cross Main Street. We have to do our best to try to make that a little bit safer, and that's what these plans were. That's so the we bought the money then will be to actually do the work. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Not for implementation of design or design. Oh, oh, oh right. Yes. I, I understand, yes. but yes. sometimes you know those yes. other things. Like and when you said construction season, that means after the fall. Yes, I mean, yeah, technically, right. March, April, depending on um, yeah. the availability yeah. of the contractors. Yeah. And plus, we would never do this in the middle of summer on Main Street. Yeah. Oh, boy, right? Yes. That would be a disaster. I mean, because they're doing significant work. This is not. That would be fun, though. Let's do it. This is not just. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I'd so like I, to see it sooner rather than later, of course. I mean, of course. It is. It's just really very dangerous when you cross in those streets. And so, you know, in my mind, let's play this out, right? So first of all, I think this was an important briefing for you folks. Yes, thank you. What you need to know is none of this was developed during your tenure as police, well, Renee's, but Correct. other than that, not during your tenure, right? And so I know that there's significant concern, but before we meet and try to recreate the wheel, I need you to see what we're, what we're doing now. 
Fast forward, let's say ARPA funds cannot be used for this or they choose not to use it for this. That's when I think the police commission should be sending communication to the board of selectmen saying, we want this project prioritized, figure it out. Well, and that's why this conversation and the one we had last time yeah. is important. Yeah. It needs to happen. That's why I brought a million dollar surplus. In the so meantime, that's, yes. that's, what, that's what I mean. Right, but that, that's what <laughs> I mean. And so I know that there's some, you know, I didn't get into it, but I know there's some question about the ARPA funding and what projects are supposed to be funded or not. So I don't know where this fits in with that. It's just not what I do for you. Um, but if there is a funding issue, I do think we should, Renee, talk to the you know board of selectmen from the police mission and say this is important to us please fund it i think this topic is prompted not that we think we know what we're doing traffic wise because i definitely don't um but because we get a lot of emails from people worried about speeding crosswalks that's in no way do i take this as i want to take this over because i do not i never thought <laughs> So I never thought, but I, I think you seeing this is so important yeah. to know what's going on. Yeah. I have yeah. a quick question. Who, why, like, who would be responsible? Why can we just not at the top of Main Street have a no turn on red? So that's a state oh, DOT issue. State. But I mean, we had a gentleman get hit and killed there. Like, I don't, I don't understand anyone with half a brain would say, yeah, that's not a good idea. There's a crosswalk well, there. How do you get that moved? I mean, how do you move Who, it like, so that that So happens? when it comes time for the state to redesign the intersection, they will put the design out to us. We will analyze it and we will add our comments. It is up to them whether they choose to true. act on our comments or not. And so every, Jeff will tell you, when he, he sees it or his engineer sees it, every time an intersection comes up for discussion, I request exclusive pedestrian phasing. Because again, when they see the walk sign, you should be able to think that there's a red everywhere else. That is not the, the national standard. The national standard is that we expect drivers to take due care to not enter crosswalks when there's pedestrians. And so a right on red is preferred because it increases what's called throughput, right? So it increases, there's a limited amount of stacking, there's increased throughput because the, the lights only are timed so long. Now there's been advancement with the overhead signals. So the little cameras, right, that went up. And at the time, two, three years ago, the first selectman called me and said, why are you putting cameras up at every intersection? And I said, where would that money come from? Like, how would I do that on my own? It's not a camera, it's a stacking beam. So it, it can see how many cars are out instead of the thing being the trip being in the road. The trip is now with that camera. I hear a question. Um, so it's not a video camera that like someone's watching. The well, so <laughs> but this, but this case of this this happened, and it's going to be a while that it's going to happen. Is there a way that we can implement that we have a no parking on the the car going the way you're going in front of that, so you can see the person? Because with that car pocket, all you see is two heads. And if we got to go another six to nine months, why don't we just take that pocket spot out? We'll see the we'll see the people standing there until this is made, and then we got a solution. So, so two know. things, that first of all, not a bad not a bad thought, but let me give you the two things. Number one, merchants on Main Street are not happy with us. So the reduction, well, they speak with a very loud taxpayer voice for the Chamber of Commerce, right? So it's a constituency. So they're not very happy with the elimination of the parking spaces. So Jeff and his team actually revisited this several times in the, in the phasing and working with the chamber through Carl to make sure that we were only eliminating parking as best we could, right? Especially when we're enhancing handicap parking, when we make the handicap parking stalls to uh, standard to code, it takes up a little bit more width because they're, they're all van um, spots. And so that also eliminates some parking. And so if you only have frontage on Main Street and you have no parking lot behind you, those four or five spots in front of your store equal your day. No one drives an extra mile to park to walk to the store, right? It's a matter of convenience. And so we have some merchants that we have to talk to from time to time. We try to put out their own cones that say parking for this store only. And that is not the case. There isn't one store on Main Street that is zoned parking spaces. And so they can't claim them, right? And so we have issues with that. So yes, two, it's only as good as, you know, people obeying the rule. So we're not gonna put a tow truck on the street and hook every car that's parked in this no parking spot. I totally understand where you're coming from. I don't think it would work. And I think it would cause more of an issue with our merchants than it would actually help. 
Okay, so I have one one last question. It doesn't have to do with Main Street, but with driving. Okay, so at the end of McDonald's, you know, if you're going towards Old Post Road, you know, you come off Ingham Hill, right? There's two lights at the end of the road. So, but it's a one lane drive. The whole right on red, there's just not enough room. So I guess my question is why are there two lights? There has to be two lights at every intersection. Facing because, me, yes. facing me, okay. Because if one fails, the other one has to work. Oh, so it doesn't mean that so there has to, to be any, two lanes. go to any intersection, you'll see. I thought it had to be two lanes. Well, there's not because there's for two cars there. People try to squeeze through. No, and that. that's my second question. It's like, can I just stand out there? <laughs> Let me ask a question you may not be able to answer in chief, you may. How will we know when the ARPA fund decision is final? So public meeting, right? The ARPA committee is a public agency, so they have their meetings. They're an ad hoc committee of the Board of Selectmen. So you can go to either the ARPA committee. We can send a letter to the ARPA committee saying how important we feel that this is. Um, Board of Selectmen, so ARPA recommendation back to the Board of Selectmen. Then it goes to the Board of Finance. And then ARPA funds are approved only at town meeting. So there's a whole transparent process to how this happens. And so what my suggestion would be is if the commission likes the work that Jeff and his team have done over many years yeah. on this project, that maybe I can give you some language that you can authorize the chairman to send a letter on behalf of the commission to the board of selectmen endorsing this project. I applaud this project. Yes, but so what my understanding of the ARPA funds is that you had applied for all of that, all like everybody who applied applied a long time ago. And there's been like a town and, vote. Yeah. So but okay. this was applied for by the first select. Right. So everybody applied for those monies and then you had to go back, like the Lions Club got it, they're giving scholarships or doing different things because they couldn't fundraise as much. So this money has been approved. Now I don't understand why it's going to be a matter of if it can be used for that because that's what it would have been applied for. Right. So I read the minutes of the last Board of Selectmen meeting, and there's some stuff that I'm not clear about, but it, there seems to be some language in there that maybe projected projects or past projects or one or the other okay. might be being questioned by our town auditors and mm -hmm. town council okay. to see if they actually fit under the ARPA. Okay. Yeah, yes. I, I don't know much more than what I okay. read. But I think your letter, your idea of a letter is, is a good one. one. I think that's a great action item for this commission. I, I would agree. And I can tell you that, you know, Carl has been pestering me for quite a while on <clears throat> wrapping this project up. Yeah. So I know he's fully, fully behind this project. He's indicated to me that he gets questions at board finance meetings of when is this project going to be ready to go. And, and quite frankly, I would take it one step further. I would not only endorse this project, but I would include some language in your letter that talks about the other two crosswalks that are not going for this funding, right, saying that five. you hope that gets funded as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Like the Sheffield one. Um, right? I do have a question. No, you have mentioned what? commitment no. by the end of the year. Can you just explain that a little bit more? Uh, the ARPA funds have to be committed by the end of this year. That's a federal deadline for expenditure of ARPA funds. Okay. They don't have to be spent this year. Just they, don't they, have, have, they have to be committed and, and just know, encumbered I, like our report. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've had different interpretations from different towns as as to what committed means. But I, I think what we're you know, aiming to do is to get this approved by uh, Connecticut DOT. And this site actually was submitted to Connecticut DOT in July. Uh, and before we finish the other two sites, we're hoping to get their comments so we can apply it. Um, unfortunately, it took them a couple of months to get back to us, but we have addressed the comments they had on this one, and we incorporated those same comments into site two and three, and they've uh, told me that uh, they will expedite uh, the review of this because we've already had uh, some conference calls uh, to just uh, tidy up the, the last ends. But it's you know, it's as usual be okay, but you know, the devil's in the details. So and so just so everyone gets that. So we spent a lot of time on the local level. Then this goes to state engineering, state DOT engineering. And they that's excellent, but if he wasn't, they ripped our plan apart. 
And Jeff will even still get comments back. And he'll have to either explain why he needs an exception or why we designed it in a certain way, or we simply have to change our design to meet their requirements. Right. So does that affect the commitment that you're submitting at the end of the year? Well, these plans will be submitted with the resubmitted this week. Okay. Probably within the next day or two. Uh, and they've, you know, indicated to me that that they will get it back um, as quickly as possible, understanding that there is a deadline. Yeah, that's what the going. So my hope is that by the end of October, beginning of November, we'll be squared away with Connecticut DOT. We can put the project out to bid. So we can have some numbers in December before um, the, the funding has to be committed. Because there's been different um, interpretations of what commitment means. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the safest way to address that is to get uh, bids in and be prepared to award a contract. I, I don't think there'd be any bigger commitment than that. So that's that's what we're aiming towards. Thank you so for the explanation. That issue. So what did town meeting? For the article. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, wasn't there just no? Yeah, they do it. They do it by item. So like they'll do like yeah. five items, town meeting, five more items, or yeah. not five necessarily. But no like public here. Yeah. But it goes through the process. So it goes ARPA to Board of Selectmen, Board of Selectmen recommendation to Board of Finance, yeah. Board of Finance back to Board of Selectmen, notice of town meeting, town meeting, public comment vote. I would think that we have to have that process completed by the end of the year. I don't know if that's even possible, but let's try it. But yeah. it sounds to me more like the sticking point is, can the ARPA money be used for this? I don't know. That's not my call. The, in my mind, the sticky thing right now is the the DOT. DOT saying, yeah, okay. Right, but uh, even, so if they say yes or no, we don't even know. It sounds like we don't even know if we can use the money for that. That's up to Carl. That's not my that's not so that what I have, I have watched some of these meetings and apparently like the like we can use the money for this. It does sound like the DOT though may be the problem. No, we're not, not just getting it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, everything else is okay. So my my goal allows this. Okay. So my goal for this commission is that when there's a significant project. That we bring in the people to do this. So, like in my mind, the next significant project in town will be Whole Foods and the redesigning of a couple different intersections. When that happens, like I've done with other major projects, again, you guys are not on the commission, but when we did Big Y, we brought folks in, I brought all the plans, we talked about the new signalization, where new signals would go. We'll do the same thing when Whole Foods comes. Is that, is that still open? I'm assuming it's still open. Uh, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> I haven't heard anything. Well, let's say it goes in. So another major development, cool. When we did North Main Street and all those condos came about, we brought this stuff here, we explained, you got a traffic engineering report, et cetera, et cetera. So big projects, you will get that as a commission. And when's the deadline that you're thinking the letter should be submitted? I would say I would tonight. Say tonight. Yes. You should authorize the chairman to maybe work with me, if you're even comfortable yes. with that language, okay. to come up with a letter that the commission would send to the Board of Selectmen endorsing this project. Okay. And the two And the other two. Yeah. And the other two streets. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's your best. I invite a motion. But... I would say, let's do it. I'll say. <laughs> yes. Until that's when you're most succinct, no, That is ever. just. All right. So are you formalizing? Yes. Well, yes. So. Uh, yes. Well, Put it together. It would be a motion authorizing the chair to meet with the chief to develop a letter to the board of selectmen uh, and supporting the crosswalk enhancements the crosswalk enhancements on street. main street uh, as presented as by the town engineer at tonight's meeting in addition to the other two streets i think we say main street crosswalks i think we got all oh you're incorporating as as okay. put them all in okay perfect as a priority as a, as a priority. So I will move that. I'll second it. All, any further discussion? Nothing. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then what I'll do, if it's okay with you, in my executive reports, why don't we just add like a traffic thing and I will keep you updated as to where this is. So when it comes back from DOT, Jeff can let me know and I can say, hey, the three crosswalks came back from DOT. Yes. Right. And that, and that way you're constantly 
I believe that'll be a better scenario yeah. than a two or three person sub. Listen, it, it, it absolutely is. This, this to me is, I had no clue this mm -hmm. stuff was happening. Yeah, the visual was so and, and this, this solved it. So in all honesty, what year did we start doing this? I don't even remember, Chief. Right? It was right? a long time but ago. that's not even comforting to me because <laughs> it, it sounds like this just took such a long time. It, you should and see all the different traffic development like done by the COG. There's always this crazy amount of money for planning. Yeah. And some of it, some of it's all spent, and some of it's never ever used. It drives me nuts. Well, this I also want to say the engineers lobby. <laughs> I don't know, Jeff. Is it the engineers can lobby? We, can we have also an update, like not of just the three crosswords? I know you still have other stuff to say, but like not of just the three that, but like can we have updates on when the other two maybe? Yeah, I, I okay. Just think about okay. And it's I can awesome. learn about things. Thank you. I just I think sometimes I could be very wrong that the commission or the public thinks that in a dark hallway, I'm sketching out enhancements to traffic stuff at the legal traffic authority and not telling anyone. That is just so not the case. It's a crazy long transparent process. Well, that, that is a very good point. And it was part of what I was going to say in that putting this on the agenda was in no way a reflection on the agency not doing a job. Yeah, I'm not a traffic agent. No, no, we but them. we talked an awful lot about putting police officers there and you know this is where we evolved from last mm -hmm. meeting to now and it, it in no way <laughs> is a reflection on no it's quite the opposite that. like i heard as i explained to Trump when i called and said hey i invited the traffic engineer i heard your concern i heard and felt your thirst for knowledge right and so here it is but commissioner mitzak in the audience he served on the commission for a really long time he can tell you, you know, when bigger projects came up, I'd show up to plan with the traffic engineer and we and we thank you. Thank you. It makes it look like you're accomplishing something by just having Jeff come and explain this tonight. Because this was an excellent presentation. Right. And I think, to be honest with you, I think at some point, either annually or biannually, I think that there should be a joint meeting of the police commission and the planning commission. To have a general workshop, a general discussion on yes. traffic concerns. That'd be awesome. And that way, every single person that's been elected in the town of Old Saver that has some sort of feel, touch, whatever to it, can sit down and just talk. And Chris Costa and I can be there as staff to give you our staff input. I see nothing wrong with that. It's just getting everyone to commit to the time. We spent our first two years on a different focus. I'm eager to move to a different focus, and I think this is all good for the community. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, and just, uh, yeah. One other thing I just wanted to point out is um, prior to the crosswalks, those beams, uh, diamond type of, uh, you've probably seen in other locations, painted markings on either side. It's like a sawtooth type pattern. I don't know if you've seen it at any other mid block crosswalks. That's a visual, and there'll also be uh, signs at each one of these that'll say "Yield Period of Pedestrians." Okay. So nice. there's, you know, there's there will be a lot of visual uh, type of warnings, um, and hopefully people will obey. Yeah, flashing lights and the, and some yeah. will complain about the flashing yeah. lights and we're ruining yeah, the colonial no, history, but I don't care because safety has to come first. Yeah, yeah yellow signs are ugly. Correct. You know, I have to say that you are one of the most patient individuals I think I have ever met. Like you have just stood there and just let us talk, and then, that's great. And you stood there. So you stood there. <laughs> I think I exude the same amount of patience uh -uh. with this commission. Uh -uh. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have yeah. to go to some. He's still standing. <laughs> Jeff spent a long time in front of planning commission. And, yeah. Thank you. I so have very locations. I, I, oh, there's more pictures. Yes, Sean. Cool. Yeah. Yes, let me ask you a question. Yes. Could you send me the PDF of these? Yes, I, I know I have them, but if you could send them at the top of my email, and I will send them out to the commissioners, yeah, okay. and you can zoom in and look at them to your heart's content. Is that okay. good? But did you want to show us in person? I mean, it's, it's if, is that what a you lot want? of it is just a lot of duplication. It's okay. just a little different scenarios. At each crosswalk, but okay. it's the same plans, mm -hmm. uh, the, the same concept, you know, with the, the beacons and the <clears throat> sawtooth patterns here and the signage. Um, all these beacons too will be solar powered. Oh, cool. Oh, good. See, I didn't even really realize the solar. Uh, that's the first time I heard that. So, yeah. yeah. Lends itself well on the 
course, there'll be battery storage, so and you don't the cell doesn't have to be out for them to work. So right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move to uh, discussion and possible action regarding the chief's proposal concerning a drone free zone. Thank you very much. So I know when you say the word drone, there's like immediate emotion on one side of the issue that. So let me take you back from that for a second. Um, so back in 2017, as I alluded to in my email, there was a public act, 17-52, that talks about. Um, Are you sure? Because we can take a break. No, thank you, Jeff. He's done this once. He's, He's done this a lot. Right? Um, that specifically says that no municipality can create an ordinance that would. Um, affect a commercial unmanned aircraft or a drone. Essentially, when they did that, they pretty much said to the municipalities, you can create an ordinance for anything that's not a commercial uh, drone or unmanned aircraft. And so we have seen different towns around the state do that over the years. So drones were never really a thing for us. I think, what was it, like four or five years ago, I think right before COVID, Clinton was in the news a lot. They had that drone that had a gun on it and it would fly around and shoot. And then there was YouTube videos of it. And then there was a drone with like a flamethrower and everyone was very, very concerned about that. And that individual was arrested time and time and time again. And then that issue kind of went away. And from time to time, we do get calls, right? It's a drone hovering over my house or there's a drone bothering me. And so after recent events where drones were used, maybe properly or improperly, I thought it might be time to take a look at this. Now, at the same time, uh, our main drone pilot, Bobby Barrett, one of our dispatchers, our per diem dispatchers, brought to my attention a class that he wanted to take, a professional development experience, where he would go and learn about de-drone software with other police departments. And de-drone software is simply free software available to us that identifies where a drone is, and most importantly, where the operator of the drone is. So you can go and say to them, please take down your drone. And so he came back with lots of information at my request. I put it together and gave it to you. My thought is, I feel that I have a responsibility, not just as the police chief, but also as the emergency management director, to go to the board of selectmen and suggest that we create an ordinance that governs and gives some authority to public safety incident commanders on regulating drones within the boundaries of Old Saber. Things that came to my mind. So when we have a significant law enforcement scene going on, we certainly don't want the person that we're interested in or somebody else watching us from the air and giving real-time data that compromises officer safety. So whether it's us or I call on the SWAT team and we're doing something, their movements, television stations that are live cannot film them. There's an unwritten rule that it just doesn't happen because it compromises officer safety. That goes away with a camera on a drone. Right? So I want to protect us from that. If we're at a fire scene and the fire chief has directed some sort of aerial attack on the fire and there's private drones trying to get footage hovering above, it hampers that. If we're dealing with a very sensitive issue, perhaps where there are deceased bodies involved, I don't believe a private drone should be able to videotape a deceased body, exclusively exclude it from FOI regulations, photographs of deceased body or live streaming video before family members are advised that their loved ones have perished. I also think that there are other times that we don't want drones flying. For example, I personally do not want a drone to be able to fly over any of our schools during the academic day. That can give unnecessary intelligence to someone who wishes the school campus or school community harm. I have an issue with drones at the beach. People go to the beach. They lie out in something that's less than full attire. And I don't want a voyeurism incident of drones hovering above innocent people trying to go to our beaches and relax. But currently, there is no law that allows us to limit that. The law would come in the form of a local ordinance. So as you're aware, a local ordinance stems from someone asking the Board of Selectmen to look into it. If they're interested in it, they would assign council. Council would draft language. It would go back to the Board of Selectmen. There would be a public hearing and a town meeting and eventual, hopefully, adoption of the town ordinance. 
And so I'm merely seeking support from this commission, and I'll be seeking it from other entities in town, the fire department, perhaps the ambulance association, perhaps others, just to go ahead and say to the board of selectmen, I would like you to look into this possibility. I think you should start with the emergency management office. Sure. He's a <laughs> hell of a guy. I'll get in touch with him tomorrow. Um, and I, I just simply want to be able to say, hey, listen, not only am I here, but the police commission also thinks we should look into it. Not the specific language. That's not our job to debate. That's the public process of creating an ordinance to debate. But that ordinance that you uh, added into the email. It was from the other town, Burlington, I think. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was fantastic. It's and clear great. and crisp. Yeah. And it, there's no holes in it. I mean, I looked to see if there was anything that, that we could add. I mean, there's a couple of things you could add if you wanted to get a little like a fine added in or something like that. But other than that, I thought that was an excellent, uh, excellent. Yeah, my addition to that would be giving authority to the public safety incident commander to make this type of decision. So fire chief or myself or whoever has an issue with a drone, boom. I will tell you that our, at our last uh, significant critical incident where uh, I requested helicopter resources, the helicopter specifically said they would not come if there are any drones in the air. And so if I need a search of a helicopter for nighttime operations or using a, a flare system, I need to be able to look to somebody and say, turn on that D drone software thing and make sure that there's nothing in the area so I can confirm to that air asset that's coming. We've done everything we can to assure you that there's no drones in the area. Now, where do we get our air assets from? Where do they come from? Um, so LifeStar is obviously an air asset for uh, medical transport. Um, they don't do searching as much anymore, but definitely uh, air transport. Um, usually we have a helo come out of Cape Cod if we're looking for a Coast Guard resource. Uh, the Connecticut State Police have Trooper 1 that comes out of Hartford. Um, and there's Eagle 1 in uh, Fairfield County that also comes out for water-based searches. Uh, Life Flight from New York is also available. They are uh, a backup to LifeStar. And Yale New Haven Hospital has just, uh, they don't do emergency scene transport. They just do inter hospital. But, you know, if it was a mass casualty incident, we could also summon, summon that crap. So I just want to make sure that the town of Old Sabre is up to the times that we're not reacting to a problem, right? I don't want to come to you and go, oh my God, we had such a problem. I want to be proactive. And I think the way to be proactive is to go to the board of selectmen and say, hey, other towns have done it. Here's the statute, here's the public act. I think this is a good idea. I'd like to work with council on it. Um, and I'd like to be able to say, oh, and by the way, the police commission thinks it's a good idea, you look into it. The fire department thinks it's a good idea. That's all I was looking for um, in this agenda. So would you need two motions, one for the for the D drone and then one for the selectmen? No, the D, thank you for asking. The D drone is, um, just a, a computer program asset that I have available to me as the police chief. Um, I, I think what I would be looking tonight is just a motion of support to continue the for the concept. For the concept, yeah. yeah. Not for the language, right. for the concept. Can I ask just two questions? Of course. One, I totally get the school thing. I'm actually surprised that that's not a thing now. I didn't even think, you know, as a mom, like drones could like fly over our kids' schools in the middle of the day. I didn't even Recess. consider that, right? The beach thing, I mean, we're out there for a reason. <laughs> Photos will be taken. But I guess my question is, what exactly, well, we have no real say, right? It's going to be a Well, it's not, the, or... the police commission wouldn't vote on it. You would vote on it as individual citizens, right? At town meeting to adopt mm -hmm. the ordinance or not. But I think as the sausage gets made, I'm not really sure the role of the commission other than attending as a member of the public, a public hearing or a board of select. Okay, so what if like, so it, total makeup scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. My son was lost in the sea, lost in one night, and I wanted the additional help. What does this act do for that? Like, what if the life star wasn't enough? What if the helicopters, could we then say any drones could go out and help? Like, Well, I think that would be up to the Public Safety Incident Command, right? So when you're in charge of a significant emergency scene, one of your responsibilities is determining what assets are proper for the response. And so if I'm in charge of an emergency scene and I believe an air asset is more valuable to the operation than a private person and their drone, I'll make that call and that'll be my decision. Okay. I mean, I get that, but 
Okay. This would be just just specifically private drones. Correct. So where does something like the press fall into this? So I, yeah, it's it's private. Um, the, the press is a unique animal. Um, generally, they work with us because they need us the next day, right? So uh, something might be great on a Monday, but they know they're going to need us on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So uh, we try to maintain um, as good a re working relationship with the uh, television press, I should say, um, as, as best as, as possible. I think I, mean, I could certainly endorse the concept of it. Um, you know, the language, of course, would be have to be legal counsel. Yeah, I mean, that that actually yeah. makes me feel a whole lot better about like the specifics, right? When you say the language, that the means language, the individual language in the ordinance. Right. Yeah. I would imagine the first thing we do is take Burlington's and all the other towns and give them to whoever council is and say, "What do you think?" Well, I'm sure the council they they've dealt with this kind of stuff already. So yeah. I just I, I personally don't want to support something that's like exactly like um early to the river, but like I don't agree with the beach thing. I mean you go to the beach, you go to the beach. Like that's you're there at the beach for a certain reason. And, we have TikTok. To your, we mom, have so much... to your mom that says, Why was this drone hovering over my 15 year old daughter? But that would come at, at the <laughs> public hearing. Daughter. <laughs> this, right. yeah. this, this yeah. part of it would come at the public hearing. Correct. Yeah. It's no, no, I get that. Hearing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just more if we're sending an endorsement, it's not for everything that was written. Does that make sense? Like, no, we, look, we just okay. frame it almost okay. as written on the agenda. Yeah. Um, it, it's that broad. And, and then legal counsel takes it to the next step. And so the, the Board of Selectmen has to decide right. they even they, want to do it. They can be yeah. like, we're not interested. And right. it dies there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To kind of piggyback on what Jessica said, um, first of all, the beach thing I think is ridiculous. If you're going to go out there and you're going to dress a 40 year old mom like your 12 year old daughter, that's wrong. And same with your kids, put clothes on them. You're out in public, you've waived your right to privacy at that point. But my concern is kind of with what Jessica said. When we were looking to get boats into this town, it was the argument was if your loved one was out on the water, you'd want as many boats out there as you could. If I was somebody and my kid was lost somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere I think I'd want as many people looking for my kid. Yeah. That's whether it be water or land, whatever yeah. it was. So, like, where does that, where would that fall into this? I mean, I, I know this is not what we're deciding tonight, but those are just my concerns. Mm -hmm. So, I think there's different phases of an incident. And I think in the immediate emergency phase, private drones are probably not included. But I think that as an incident evolves and those other assets that are temporary in nature, a helicopter disappears, we might ask people to get involved and coordinate efforts with public safety, okay. just like we've done for missing people in the woods. Mm -hmm. So when we've exhausted canine teams, right? We don't want a million people walking in the woods because then the canine teams are inefficient because there's body scent everywhere. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's a lot of people who want to help but they're not trained to understand that there's certain things that might seem good that aren't good to the overall operation. And so that's where the public safety incident commander comes in to make those decisions. So maybe after like eight days, if you can't. No, it could be four hours. It, it really depends. I mean, it's on the identified. Yeah, it depends on the incident. We have a drone in the police department. We have an remember I sent that email. We have an emergency management yeah, yeah, drone yeah, that's right. that is available to emergency management, to the police right. department, yeah. to the fire department. Thanks for refreshing the memory. No problem. <laughs> I invite a motion that we authorize the chief to work with the board of selectmen and encourage the board of selectmen to work with the chief to create a new municipal ordinance concerning a drug-free zone. During emergency operations. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No, I'm fine with it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Uh, okay. Comments from the public. We've had some very patient members of the public in attendance tonight. Uh, any comments? How about online, Larry? Do we have any raised hands? Not currently. All right. Um, item nine, discussion and possible action to enter into executive session to discuss a pending legal matter. And uh, item 10, 
Uh, together, I would treat them uh, discussion and possible action to enter into executive session to discuss matters pertaining to collective bargaining. Uh, the chief, I would invite you to join us in that discussion. Uh, I have a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jessica? Oh, yes. Oh, I, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We are out of executive session. Uh, next item on the agenda is comments from the chief. Great, I'll just be very brief. Um, I just wanna thank my personnel. They've, they've handled a couple of very critical serious incidents um, since the last time we were together and every single member of our agency, no matter their title, position, schedule, whatever has performed admirably. Um, and I, I really, really appreciate the professionalism that they exhibited and the work that they've done. So mm -hmm. thank you to them. Comments yes. from uh, commissioners, Jessica. Um, I won't comment too much because I don't know what, what we can say, but thank you for all your work that you did with the incident that did happen recently. Um, Tremendous team effort. I was, lots I was, of people, lots my of mind was blown, and I get up until four thirty in the morning listening to the scanner, and I'm just, I can't. Like, thank you. All right, that's it. Mark. That's it. Joe. Thank you for bringing in the um, traffic engineer tonight. That was a good idea. Good night. Nope. Jackie. And the police. Yeah. Yes. I'm real happy about that. Oh, they were so cool, right? That was nice. Make the nice. motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to stay here. Yeah. Like, come on, folks. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.